Hello everyone and welcome back to Super Medico. My name is George and I'm a final year medical student from Kerala. So today we have with us in this interview a really inspiring person, a doctor who has now cleared the civil service examinations with an all India rank of 55. So let's talk and to get to know a lot more from Dr. Arunas Nayar who scored a an all india rank of 55 in the civil service examinations welcome cheta uh, to this interview thank you thank you very yeah. much so those for those no non malayalis i'll be using the word cheta to address i'll be an elder brother uh, so cheta can you introduce yourself first uh, i'm dr arun s nayar uh, i'm i'm from kerala uh, currently residing in trivandrum uh, i'm a um, medical graduate did my mbbs from government medical college trivandrum and then only i started preparing for civil services and now ended with some sort of success at all india rank 55 so before we start the interview we have a small ice breaker thing so can you share any movie book or tv series suggestion from your okay. side for all our viewers uh okay uh, about the movies my genre is actually more of thrillers mystery investigation war dramas those kind so uh, last to last month uh, i was uh, behind submarine movies actually i did with some around one dozen of submarine movies like uh, uh, u571k19 video maker uh, then das boot uh, then below so so many movies are there like uh, some uh, around 12 movies i do and uh, about web series i think Uh, recently i have been into indian web series asura and patalo was pretty much good experience uh, then books uh, recently i read the plague by uh, camus especially in nakaron then i uh, revised the malayalam novel oru deshathinte katha so this were my uh, recent uh, experience yeah, there were some great suggestions so let's get start with the interview okay Uh, so for all those watching yeah since this might be a long interview i'll be putting time stamps for all the questions below so we'll be having it in two sections first we'll start with some personal and general based questions and second we'll go directly to the ias preparation type questions okay yeah the first question okay so you'll be taking up ias right you'll be taking ias ha huh. okay uh, yes yeah when did you start uh, dreaming about becoming a civil servant uh see uh, the dream was not such a passionate one during my school days uh because uh, even when we see some ias officer uh, going through rules or some functions and also during some cinemas uh, there were some sparks inside me but becoming a doctor was the most uh, top priority at that time uh, but after getting into the medical graduation and doing my house surgeons only i started to thinking about something else a wider platform so the what a shift towards the career of a civil servant has uh, mainly occurred during my house agencies okay what inspired you actually to take up that dream uh actually i cannot say it's an inspiration which changed my <laughs> uh, focus from uh, medical graduation to civil service but rather i thought uh, when i saw the career of a doctor more closely uh, during my internship uh, i started to un- understand that uh, it is kind of a monotonous uh, kind of career because after we going into post graduation and then to the super speciality the cardiologists are lo- only looking for heart and neurologists are only looking for brain uh, now the entire human body so those kind of feeling so i thought i i need some wider platform where i can show my caliber and efficiency to uh, intervene with more than uh, than multiple frontiers of people uh, multiple challenges and opportunities so i started thinking about a wider platform of course for a doctor i think there are a restricted number of platforms in in our country uh, to give such kind of an option so civil services was one of the best for that uh, any specific motto or goal which you live by once you enter the civil services <laughs> uh do my duty that is the first motto because uh, ultimately civil service is a public servant official so nah, even though it it has got some colors uh, it's actually a government official simply uh, where a, that person is entitled with some duties and objectives and missions uh, put forward by, by the government so we need to do that first uh, then depending upon the demand satisfy the demand that is the uh, motto of any service so uh, that is the motto 
me also i'm going to ask you the most controversial question or maybe the question i got the most number of times from all of our uh, viewers see uh, like there's an ethical or a moral problem when you shifted from uh, being a doctor to an is officer people may tell like that like you know uh, you the a seat was wasted maybe somebody could have studied in that uh, seat and bec- become a doctor and if you want to become an is you could have taken some other degree like many people might have told you also the same thing right so what is your take on that how would you reply to such uh, comments yes i respect those comments actually uh... but if you are looking into one person ambition and dream uh, to something it is actually a personal choice and we are looking to the ethical dimensions because in india we have a constitutional values to do any profession if we are qualified for that article 19 tells so tells so so uh, according to constitution there is nothing illegal i did by shifting my career from uh, medicine to civil service and in addition to this even though the civil service may say as a generalist kind of a job uh i think more government uh, of the past many uh, times are absorbing more kind of specialists into their bureaucrat bureaucracy because uh, uh, for specialist needs for example health sector is uh, one area where some specialist knowledge is necessary to uh, have a good policy making as well as for implementation so i think uh, specialists are more absorbing the lateral entries in our controversial issue into the bureaucracy Uh, so even the upsc is also looking for specialists that is why they are giving opportunity for mbbs candidate to uh, to write the exam and also they are providing medical science as an optional uh, so that means uh, upsc and government need more specialists so i think uh, that is uh, the reason why i change I, i i don't think any uh, ethical issue yes of course there is a deficiency of one doctor is there but uh, see the health sector is facing so much issues so an administrator having the ground realities of health sector need to be there in the top for addressing those issues the one who know the problem is the better solver uh, better solution maker for that problem so i think can be a doctor for the society rather than for doctor for a couple of patients so that is my take on that yeah that's a nice take uh, so did i do ever plan for take any post graduation or anything or was like you were fixed on civil service preparation ah uh, see actually uh, during the couple of initial months of my internship i started preparing for post graduation any examination uh, i did uh, uh, like mcq type of preparation but later only i shifted my focus into civil services so then onwards uh, i did not had any ambition to take post graduation i stick to the civil service and in future also i want to be in civil service okay uh, now i have a question from abhishek j uh, he asked like uh, when you made this choice to go for po- uh, civil service uh, did you face any sort of hurdles like from your family or your friends who uh, you know opposed your decision uh i won't say there were not much restriction from any side regarding this but initially when i talked about uh, the ambition by especially the changing career from being a doctor to a civil servant uh, some people actually raised their eyebrows why should i change you are good at uh, academics you are doing well in a, uh, as a doctor so why should you change the profession so it's like uh, initial part there were some questions uh, but i convinced them easily uh, by telling my ambition so then onwards it was a smooth path there were not much restriction except from the huddles of in situ huddles of uh civil services exam okay, so you, you did not regret any time right during your preparation of going back to the medical thing did you regret any time <laughs> regrets uh see this is a long process so in between uh, we may get demotivated and uh, lose confidence so in those times i think yes one side of my brain is uh, putting impulses like why should i change this career shift uh, you can go to pg and settle your life there so uh, especially when my friends are getting into uh, post graduation i am still here uh, nothing just doing the preparation for an exam uh, so uh, sometimes the regrets are there but the other side of the brain is uh, well strong enough to overcome those regrets i think uh, huh? next question is by srijit j so he asked If you get a chance to meet the younger Arun Nair who had just started medical college or is going to take admission in a medical college, what will you be your message? Uh, what will you tell him? Actually, it's a difficult question. Okay. Uh, the thing is, uh, 
I would say that uh, younger Arun is now to start to prepare civil services from the early days itself, along with the academics in the medical colleges, so that uh, uh, I think I can use my first chance more effectively and get into the service rather than spending another year uh, in this particular examination, adding much more pressure onto my head. So that's the only thing that I can advise, other than medical college life is a wonderful thing. There is nothing to regret. So. Uh, the next question is by Reshma Prakash. So she was asking, is there any edge for civil service preparation if you have studied medicine or as as a doctor? Any edge specific edge you might have? Uh, I think uh, for doctors, one thing is we can uh, uh, study for longer periods without uh, tiredness. That is one advantage we have because we are managing uh, tons of books. Uh, having many kilograms and uh, thousands of pages, so uh, that is one. Other thing is, I think writing skill the doctors have a uh, uh, have an edge over the candidates because uh, we it's kind of similar to the university examination what we had in MBBS life. The UPSC examination is also like that. Less marks, we need to write more, like kind that 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 kind of uh, strategy, and. Uh, uh, and another thing is taking medical science is also uh, an advantage for a medical graduate, especially uh, if he or she did well in the colleges. So these are the three, three things that I consider to be an uh, an edge for the medical graduate over the other candidates, especially in the examination scenario. Yeah, well, the next is like a technical based question we got like, uh, does an IAS, how much powers does an IAS officer have? Because uh, we hear that politicians are over IAS officers and like that and also what's the actual reality of the thing? Uh, actual reality that yet to know for me too because <laughs> uh, I'm not well versed with those kind of scenarios but see uh, there is a well-defined powers, duties and responsibilities of officer. Uh, so we need to uh, work in within them. There are some limitations. We cannot be a superhero like uh, like we see in cinemas. Uh, so there can be issues, there can be conflicts because in every profession, even in the medical profession, we can have conflicts with patients and bystanders, with our colleagues, etc. So in, in that scenario, I think communication skills are the key for a conflict resolution and it's a personal relationship. So anywhere there is a conflict, I, I believe more than 90% of the conflicts, the reason is a communication gap. So if we are well versed with uh, that particular thing, I think there is not much issues uh, with uh, dealing with politicians or any other conflicts uh, in our service. Not only in civil services, any other service. Yeah, I agree with that. Even like even our medical call or hospital doctors also, the main issue is the communication thing with the patients. When we miss out on that, it can lead to all these problems. Okay. Yes. Uh, next question is, how was your MBBS time? Where you were like a, a really a distinction level student, or like full time in academics and all, or was it a fun type? How was your MBBS life? Uh, MBBS life, a uh, pretty good one. Uh, a lot of good friends, teachers. Uh, see, uh, I would say, to be frank, I am more on a silent side in colleges. Uh, not much active, but okay. Uh, enjoy the moments, uh, such kind of, and not uh, well versed with those uh, those kind of politics or group activism, nothing like that. Uh, but more focused on the academic itself. Uh, but uh, uh, that actually, this question need to be answered by my friends rather than me. So uh, let it left to them. <laughs> One thing to my all our viewers, he's also my senior too from uh, Government Medical College Trivandrum. Uh, so, do you think being a student from TMC or you're being an, uh, from the alma mater, uh, did it help any way in your preparation or give you some extra edge or something like that? How did it help you being a student of TMC? Uh, I think, of course, uh, because uh, see, first thing is, uh, I think the civil service uh, dreams may not come to me if I did my graduation in some other colleges because TMC is uh, one of the well-esteemed, well-established tertiary care center in South India itself because most of the Tamilian people are also uh, getting into uh, the TMC for the services. So we are actually uh, show the real scenario in the society, the poorest of poor, we can say. We dealt with them 
so their demand is not just the medical care they have so much of social issues they have so much of economical issues cultural issues uh, so so a wider problems are there it's a, it's a network of problems and even if we address one medical issue or even if we address symptoms of a particular disease i think that is not enough to address the entire issue of those of people so that kind of thought process is evolved because i am a part of tmc and uh, of course my teachers encouraged a lot my friends are there so i am always proud to be part of the tmc and also tmc is the key factor that changed the thought process in me to work how to work as a good civil servant so of course it will help in future as well okay so now you have cleared the exams great results so what are the processes ahead left for you actually uh, now we have training and that is in masuri lbs na uh the administrative uh training is there uh, it, it is happening in different phases uh, the first phase is a foundation course it is uh, around 4 to 5 months um that is yet to happen the details are not yet known to us because uh, uh some some paperwork are there and also the corona is putting some pressure and causing some delay uh so the training is the most important part like then we will get the cadre allocation service allocation and then the posting so how are you going to plan uh, you know how are you planning to spend this current free time uh, actually currently i'm in uh, i'm in home quarantine uh, more precisely room quarantine because i went to delhi for interview and 14 days uh, room quarantine is there so uh, i could not enjoy the success with even with my parents because still i, I can see them uh, from my doorstep so uh, the first thing is i need to get out of this room and enjoy with my family and friends uh then we can think about the next steps of uh celebration okay so now we are going to the second part of our interview that will be more exam related and preparation based tips uh so jada can you tell me how was your preparation basically like what did you do just after passing out mbbs which i believe was in 2017 right so after that what were what was your strategy the career shift is of course during in between internship so uh during my internship i started uh, reading newspaper because we are not well versed with english newspaper those days so i started reading hindu newspaper from my internship itself so that was the only thing that i did during my internship i completed my uh, internship in 2017 september around september october and our, our convocation was towards the end of that year and uh, actually the real preparation started in 2018 only Uh, so i joined uh, an institute called ravus in bengaluru and uh, things uh, around 6 months uh, so i followed the syllabus uh, then uh, i read the classroom materials the usual stuff the hindu newspaper plus ncert from 8 to 12 standard the humanities textbooks then the books uh, list available in the market i put a uh, one list of such books in my facebook post so if any candidates want to see that they can look into it uh, then uh, i tried my attempt in 2018 films also but it was in between my classroom preparation so i couldn't succeed uh, then one year i entirely devoted uh, for civil service preparation for 2019 so uh, you know the civil service is a three stage examination prelims mains and interview or personality test prelims is a kind of uh, objective type of question mcq similar to our neat examination uh, having two paper and uh, which we need to clear the cut off each year the cut off will vary and there is a detailed uh, syllabus available in the upsc website those who want can follow that and uh, i said as previously those were the materials i followed and then uh, the prelims exam usually happens in june it was in 2019 june for me uh, then after that uh, there is a confidence that i will be about the cut off so i started preparing for the mains as well mains is a descriptive type of examination and it contains three parts one is a qualifying paper an english and a regional language i opted malayalam then there is general studies five papers and optionals uh, two papers one subject two papers so i opted a medical science itself as option so totally nine papers where seven papers are counted for the rank and to the two qualifying papers is just qualified they will not count it for the rank so uh, each paper carries 250 marks so that is the pattern of exam 
and once we're done with me then there is a personality test it's actually not an interview it's a personality test they did not test our knowledge but test our personality which carries around 275 marks those who clear the mains will uh, get a call letter from upsc to attend the uh, personality test in delhi in upsc bhavan actually this year it was uh, more kind of a thriller type uh, film that uh, majority of the candidates did their uh, interview before the corona period so then then only the nationwide lockdown came into picture so we the unfortunate people are uh, get the interview postponed and uh, my interview happened in 27 july in the second half so it was a pretty good experience uh, to go to delhi in the corona time and attending the interview so so after the interview the marks of main and interview will club together and then only they will put the results final results out Inter- uh, the marks of the preliminary examination will not be counted for the rank so this is a uh, just a skeleton of upsc examination okay 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 uh, so civil service journey as you said it is like full of ups and downs you might feel demotivated and all so what kept you motivated actually for this long journey uh i see the exam itself is around a long process from prelims to interview it will take almost one year and we need to have another year of preparation in total if we need to crack the civil service examination from the first chance itself we almost need some two years of preparation or we need to spend two years so it is a long process so that uh, uh, we need to keep motivated we should not get exhausted in between the uh, the preparation so i think the better uh, the, i always say that don't live for a civil service preparation be civil service preparation part of our life the first category of people is actually get exhausted they will do everything everything devoted for civil services and uh, uh, it is a kind of an extreme uh, pressure and uh, extreme situation and uh, if something happen at the end uh, they cannot tolerate with that so to keep civil service preparation as a part of our life we have another life outside with our family and friends and everything happens around us so be part of it also spend some time with family spend some time with friends even i have uh, i had three trips in between my preparation uh, one to uh, the island as well so uh, so it was a pretty good experience in between so these things the enjoyable moments with our nears and dears are the one which kept me motivated Okay, so we have to go for trips during our civil service preparation, right? To keep ourselves motivated. <laughs> okay. It it was a, a, a energetic experience for me. Like taking a break in between will uh, refresh our energy, like a charging. So it, for me, it was like that. But everyone is unique. You know. What was your most disappointing moment in the journey, and how did you overcome that? Uh, I think I failed in 2018 prelims. Uh, that was the most disappointed moment because I uh, see I prepared for even though I prepared for some 5 6 months um it was pretty disappointed because uh, the thing is I got around 90 marks and the cutoff was around 98. So 8 marks short and that to in first chance see, uh, I I need to spend one more year for this examination this uncertain examination. So that was a pretty uh, hard moment well uh, how i reacted to it i think i cried <laughs> that was the thing that i can do it is a uh, one of the best solution for uh, cooling our brain so uh, then it was okay everyone was there to support i went down with all energy after that what are some interesting questions you faced in the interview anything uh, something would, uh, which you would share with us some interesting questions and interesting questions uh, one question is uh, actually the first question was whether after they went through my details they asked uh, whether your parents have any complaints about you is there any complaint so that was the first question uh, i said after thinking for a second that uh, my parents uh, usually say that i am i am not taking much food so that was the complaint so they laughed and then changed it to all of a sudden the interview changed it to food and the chairman was a fond of the kerala appam so uh, he asked about uh, appam and whether i like that about some some sub questions regarding that so that was an interesting part actually it cooled me down uh, to face the interview the rest of the part then another unexpected question is uh, they since i had a medical background they asked when we can expect another pandemic like corona because we faced one such a pandemic 100 
last years back the spanish flu and now we are facing another one and when we can face another pandemic so these were the question that considered to be unexpected uh, uh, most of the other questions were sort of perversed now my next question is what will be your advice to a young medical student who is aspiring for civil service exam because you are also you were also similar you also followed a similar fashion uh one thing is dream about it that is the best and for most important advice because uh i said previously that in the last two years there were no single day that i dream about this particular day when the result published and my name is present on that pdf so dream about it uh, second thing is for as a medical student i think there is a it itself is a walk the journey in the uh, medical school so uh, start some sort of preparation in between itself if they have time like reading some newspaper uh, then going through the syllabus and reading some books if available like ncrts and all because the full fledged preparation we know we can start only after the graduation especially if the student is from government colleges the internship is much hard to work so we we may not get enough time so do some sort of preparation in between so that we will be in that track uh, once they passed out and uh, then second third thing is the optional subject think uh, about medical science because most of the medical science aspirants choose some other optional uh, as a safe play so medical science is a good optional if you do good in colleges so uh, think about it before going for another option because we are well versed with medical sciences and we are pretty good at it so uh, this are the third uh, what then it's smart work uh, i always say not hard work which is required for upsc it is the smart work which is required for upsc understanding the demand of this examination this way the advice is that i can give to a medical fellow okay we got a question from kevin and uh, he is okay. he is attempting csc prelims this year so his question is where should i start uh, he has no idea what to do oh uh, he is preparing for this year and uh, it is uh, almost high time for the preliminary examination so the thing is uh, write the exam the year itself so you he will get an idea but uh, there is a high chance that uh, he may or may not clear the examination there is a because two year because we need to respect the competitors as well they are working hard for many years so my advice is if he fails this time don't take it seriously go for the next time start preparing as i said the strategy the book list uh, if he wish to join some institute that's also okay write mock exams do well nothing is impossible any special any mistakes you made in your preparation which you would like to change something like that so the future aspirants may not repeat the same things uh one thing is running behind so much of materials that's what i did during the initial period of preparation because see this is a digital world we can get all information at the working desk so running behind information is not good for upsc when you go for a particular subject you will get thousand books uh, thousands of informations and there are hundreds of institutes uh, providing such kind of information so stick to one or two uh, depending upon the advices of their seniors and uh, the advices available from the coaching institute so uh, stick to one or two study it revise it revise it revise it and reproduce it in good answers that is more important than reading more number of materials that was one mistake serious mistake i did in the past that most of the candidates are doing right now Okay, and that's a really good suggestion. Like, it's not only for civil service, even for us, even for NEET, PG aspirants, every it covers for everybody. Yes. Okay, so we are going to the last question of this interview, uh-huh. basically. What will be your closing remarks? Some closing message? Anything you would like to say to all the viewers, not only to civil service aspirants, to everyone? Uh, see, uh, one thing is, if you have a dream and passion, nothing can stop us. that is the thing as i said earlier dream about any any ambition not only civil service of becoming a doctor but students uh, who is right now doing in the higher secondary classes are aspiring to become doctors so for them also uh, dream about it second thing is do the smart work third thing is dedicated effort because we should not cheat ourselves during our preparation for anything and uh, fourth thing is uh, i always say that i'm from uh, some sort of uh, backward uh, category because i'm from a village 
in Kerala. I did my schooling since government school in Malayalam medium. So there are some sort of students who have some inferiority complexes that uh, whether these create any hurdles for their success. So uh, students, I believe they should not choose factors uh, in their dream because nothing can stop you if we are dreaming and working hard for that. So don't feel uh, like uh, I'm worthless during these kind of preparations. So these were the messages that I can give. Yeah, that's a great message. So we wish you all the best in your journey ahead and we hope to see you as a great IAS officer, an inspiration person. All the best and uh, thank you all. Uh, so till the next video, goodbye. Bye. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you.